Hey my friends, welcome back. A couple of days ago I asked you to send me in some questions about the things that you want to know and I feel like it's been ages since we've last done a Q&A video and this week I've just been really feeling like getting cozy and catching up with you guys in this way so I am excited. Thanks to everyone who submitted a question. You had some very interesting ones <laughs> so I am excited to dive in. There's a bunch of different topics here that I'm just gonna mix and match. And so I will make sure to add video chapters to this video. So feel free to kind of skip ahead to specific questions if you want. And if you are new here, welcome. My name is Vera and this is a place where you can get weekly tips and inspiration for inviting more simplicity, happiness and calm in your everyday life. So feel free to hit subscribe if you haven't already. And let's begin with the first question. What made you realize that simplicity and minimalism was the right lifestyle for you and what is your favorite cup of tea to drink? I felt it in my heart and I immediately knew that this was the right lifestyle for me. I just started decluttering and creating more simplicity in my surroundings even before I knew what minimalism was so it felt right instantly i seriously love all tea i've always loved tea so asking me to choose a favorite is tricky but if i had to choose a favorite i would say japanese green tea so sencha especially that really high quality loose leaf sencha is absolutely amazing books are hardest for me to let go of it's related to my work but still i'd like to be open to downsizing what would you recommend to us book lovers First of all, I don't think that we have to declutter our books as minimalists, but if you are feeling like you want to downsize a little, then I would always advise with books to work with a goal or a restriction. Let's say you own 200 books and you feel like you want to downsize to owning half. That means that you have to get rid of 100 books and this gives you kind of an idea. And then I would suggest to not start with the 100 books that you want to let go of, but start with the 100 books that you absolutely want to keep no matter what. So pick your favorites and work your way through your books until you hit that mark, that goal or that number where you want to be. And that can give you an idea of what type of books are left over and then you can declutter those if you want. You don't have to. I am really enjoying the content you have in a beautiful filmmaking. It is so soothing to watch. I would like to know more about your plants and which one you particularly like or recommend. First of all, thank you so much for that wonderful compliment. My favorite plants are definitely my bonsai tree, my little bonsai tree in my windowsill and my giant palm tree right there. And then this guy is I really don't know the name of that plant so if you know please let me know in the comments it is a very easy plant to take care of and it grows super super fast and I really love it so I recommend it if you want to start with plants get one of those those ones why are you not married to your boyfriend I'm really curious is it because you don't believe in marriage or something else because I know that you have been dating for a long time and I've been wondering about this for a while so me and my boyfriend have been together a long time. Like you said, uh, it has been over 18 years already and we met in high school. I'm 32 now. So yeah, we are very happy together and we are definitely each other's best friends. I certainly don't have anything against uh, marriage or weddings, but it is just something that we never felt the need to do ourselves. However, we are registered partners, which is a thing here in the Netherlands. Uh, legally, it is very similar to marriage but it's just a lot easier, quicker, cheaper, and completely stress-free. So basically you just go down to city hall with your two witnesses, you sign a document, and then 15 minutes later, you're registered partners. We've always felt that we wanted to spend the rest of our lives together. And so we did want to have things taken care of legally and practically speaking. So for example, in case something happens to either one of us that the other person is taken care of. And so with the two options that were available to us, marriage and registered partnership, we just preferred the registered partnership option because it was so easy and that was what we did. Um, it just felt right for us and we're very happy with that choice. We made a fun day of it together, just the two of us, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I guess technically I could call him my partner or even my husband, but um, we just prefer to use the terms boyfriend and girlfriend because they feel more natural to us. Do you want to have children? Well, let's just continue on <laughs> with the next question that most people will probably be thinking of right now. 
The answer is no. We decided that we don't want to have children, and so we are a child-free by choice couple. We gave this a lot of serious thought, obviously, and just like with marriage and weddings, it's not like I have anything against children or against people who do want to have children, but it's just not something that I could ever see myself doing. I could probably give you like 20 or 30 different reasons why I don't want to have kids, like the money or the time or not being able to travel as much and all of these things but in the end I feel like these reasons don't really matter if you feel in your heart that you want to be a parent and that you want to have kids then I think you will always try to find some kind of way to make things work regardless and for me I just I never really had that I never felt like I wanted to be a parent or a mother or that I wanted to have children and it is the same for my boyfriend so we feel very good about our choice I've also just never really felt drawn to children or babies so if you show me a puppy or any kind of animal really I immediately go oh they're so cute and I want to pet them and hold them and I just never had that with babies and I think that that is okay everyone should do what feels right for them and we are very happy to be child free by choice tell us about who creates the videos who edits them and things like that I do everything myself, so this is all 100% me. I, um, I film my own videos, I write them, I edit them, I reply to my comments, I make my own website, I create my own online courses. So everything is done by yours truly, and the only thing that I have hired outside help with is doing my taxes. And I do also sometimes use stock footage for things like nature b-roll. Do you have a day job? I think you said both you and your boyfriend work from home. What do you both do for work? So I've actually gotten quite a few questions about this. For me, Simple Happy Zen is my only job and my only source of income. So I am a full-time content creator on YouTube and I have been doing that for a while already. My boyfriend usually works in an office, but ever since the pandemic, we were encouraged to work from home as much as possible. So that is why he now also works from home and he is a software developer. If you want to know more about my life as a full-time YouTuber, uh, what my days look like, how I make money with YouTube, uh, how I turn this into a business, I actually have a full dedicated video on it. So I will leave it in the description box plus right there in the card. I always love the lifestyle of a minimalist and I get motivated, but then there are times when I fall off the wagon and end up buying things because they are cute and I want them and they make me happy, but I don't need them and end up getting stuff again. How to overcome that? Yes, I have that too sometimes when I really feel like just wanting to buy something new or something fun or cute or just something, just kind of a temporary excitement. And especially in the last couple of months, I have noticed this um, browsing a little bit more just to feel excited about something and have something to look forward to. So I think it helps to ask yourselves in these situations, what am I trying to do? Why am I looking for something to buy and what's going on? Is it because I wanna maybe make myself feel better about something? And if that is the case, then it could be a good idea to actually focus your energy on that instead of buying something to cover it up. But in the end, a little shopping here and there is still okay within the minimalist lifestyle, I think. Once possible, of course, where are you planning to go on holiday? Have you ever done a solo travel? I have never done solo traveling before because honestly, I think that traveling is really cool, but it is also very exhausting and overwhelming at times. And I just really feel like I need my boyfriend with me. <laughs> I think also one of the best things about travel is the experiences and sharing those memories with someone. So I would always prefer to go on vacation with my boyfriend so that we can have that shared experience. Whenever possible, I would love to go to Tessel again, which is an island at the north of the Netherlands. Very beautiful and I love visiting there, as well as taking the train to all kinds of different places in Europe. Is your tongue pierced? It's so funny how many questions I get about this and I have actually even received emails from people asking me about this. When I was 17, I thought it would be cool to get my tongue pierced and so I did. And um, yeah, I've had it almost half my life. I'm 32 now and I've just never taken it out. And I used to have a bunch more piercings, but right now I only have the tongue piercing and my belly button and those two are here to stay. 
I did consult my dentist and I had them place it a little bit more towards the back so that it never touches my teeth, so there's no damage whatsoever. How do you handle being on YouTube as an introvert? Are there any particular challenges or strategies that you have? So I get why it wouldn't seem this way, but YouTube is actually a pretty introverted job because I'm always by myself. It's basically always me sitting behind my laptop, either I'm writing or you know, in front of a camera I'm filming. Most of the time I'm editing and so it's actually a pretty solitary job and I do really miss having colleagues around. When it comes to filming and talking to a camera, it's just something that you get used to. It feels very weird in the beginning, but right now it, it feels very natural for me. And actually the most fun part about my job that I love the most is just being able to connect with so many different people all around the world. And I feel like even though the community has grown a lot, I still recognize so many people in the comments and I just love that. I would like to know your thoughts on why people like myself who are not minimalists like watching your channel. Of course, I know you offer so much excellent advice regarding living a calm life, but I'm referring more to the minimalism part of your videos. I know why I watch you, but I'm wondering why you think we do. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. <laughs> Thank you so much for asking, it's very sweet. I do make a lot of videos about topics other than minimalism, so I do think that those videos also draw people in, uh, things like slow living, uh, self-care, happiness, healthy habits, things like that. But I always try to be 100% myself when I film my videos, and I think when you do that consistently and you're always authentic or as authentic as you can be, I think you will automatically attract people who kind of like your vibe or who feel comfortable around you or just people that you would probably have a good connection with in real life as well. And when you do that, I think it creates some kind of connection that is not based on exactly the topics of your videos. Am I right about this? Please let me know. What are your personal inspiring resources when you feel down or just need something more or even to maintain the mindset? Actually, when I feel down or uninspired, uh, my favorite resource is music and it always helps. And my favorite two bands are Sigaross and The Smashing Pumpkins. And lately I have also been really loving lo-fi. It really helps me to relax and feel better. I'm always looking for great books. Can you share a few of your all-time and recent favorites? Recent favorites, I just finished reading the Lord of the Rings trilogy for the second time and I absolutely loved it. Way, way better than the movies. An all-time favorite has to be Haruki Murakami. I've mentioned this on the channel once or twice before. He is my all-time favorite author. Absolutely amazing. And if you are into magical realism, which he uses a lot, I really recommend picking up any of his books. They're all good. And if you are not that into magical realism, then I recommend checking out Norwegian Wood. How come you speak English so well? More about life in the Netherlands. Thank you wel voor het compliment en voor de vraag. Altijd leuk om uh, te praten over Nederland en de Nederlandse cultuur. Dus ik zal mijn best doen om uh, goed te beantwoorden. I think most Dutch people are able to speak English pretty well and we learn it in school. But I think more importantly is that we do not dub our shows and movies that we watch. We always watch them with subtitles. So ever since we are old enough to read subtitles, we have been growing up around English speaking things. I have been growing up with friends, for example, and I think that really helps because we hear it a lot in our daily life. And for me personally, I have also uh, always read all my books in English, so I think that also helps. More on life in the Netherlands. I think this is a really broad question and I would love to talk about this more, but it would probably make this video too long. So maybe for another day, but I do have two videos on Patreon uh, where I talk more about these things. One is about what it's like to live in the Netherlands. And another video, I talk about the Dutch version of Higge, we call Gezellig. So if you want to check those videos out, you can always join me on Patreon. What does your boyfriend, family think about your videos? My boyfriend and my family are quite proud, I think, <laughs> but we actually don't really talk about YouTube or minimalism that much. How often do you meditate? Well, lately, not as often as I should. 
When it comes to meditating, I always have these periods when I'm meditating every day and it's going well, and then I don't meditate again for months on end, and that's when I actually really need to, so uh, that's something that I'm working on. But I do always meditate for a few minutes after doing yoga, which is a couple times a week. I know you and your boyfriend like to play video games. Which ones are your favorites? I have been into more relaxing games lately, like Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley. I am mostly into Japanese RPGs, which are very heavily story driven and I always love them. So things like Final Fantasy, uh, Xenoblade, Persona, the Tales of series, all of these things, I really like them. And lately me and my boyfriend have been playing the Trails in the Sky series together and it has been absolutely wonderful. I also love Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing, but to be honest, I decided not to play them, even though we do have a Nintendo Switch uh, Lite, one of those handheld thingies, because I know that they are way too addictive for me and I'm going to spend a lot more time playing video games than I would you know, prefer. <laughs> so I decided not to play them. Do you want or plan having pets? Yes, I would love adopting pets in the future. It is definitely one of my goals. In this apartment, it's not exactly ideal because it gets really, really insanely hot here in the summer. And I just don't think that a pet would be very comfortable living here in the summer. And so I just don't want to do that to him. <laughs> but if we can make it work somehow, make it a little bit cooler, or if we can move somewhere else in the future, I would love to adopt a cat from the shelter. I really believe in adopt, don't shop. So right now we're just kind of slowly learning more about it, doing some research about what it would take to take good care of a cat and to see if it would really suit us. But yeah, I would really be open to doing that in the future. My childhood dog was named Jimmy and I just loved him so, so much. And I would not be able to choose between being a dog person or a cat person. I seriously love all animals. My question is, where is your favorite place you like to go on holiday? And what is your favorite color? My favorite color is green because I love being in nature. And my favorite place to go on holiday would be either Tessel that I mentioned before, if I just want a quick thing that doesn't take so much time getting there, and otherwise it would be Japan. I've seen your comments on the Frank James videos and I wonder if you're into typology and if so, what is your personality type? Yes, I'm definitely interested in typology. I just think it's a very fun and interesting way to learn more about ourselves and just to see what we are naturally good at and also where we can still grow and develop as people. I am an ENFJ, which is very similar to INFJ. Uh, we have the same four functions, only they're in a slightly different order. What's it like being vegan in the Netherlands? Easy, difficult, are there enough options for vegans? And is it vegan friendly? What parts towns are more vegan friendly? I would say it's getting easier and easier lately. And especially in the supermarkets, you have so many vegan options. So basically for everything that is not vegan, they have a vegan version or an alternative. And in restaurants, especially in the bigger cities, you will most likely be able to find a vegan option or a few vegan options, but it does take a bit of research before you go of just checking out the menus. Unfortunately, there are still many places that don't offer vegan options, maybe vegetarian, but not even that sometimes. So you will have to do a bit of research before you go, but then it's quite easy to find somewhere with vegan options. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for being here, for sticking around till the end. I really appreciate it. And I had a lot of fun, so I hope you did too. And if you wanna stay in touch, you can always follow me on Twitter. You can subscribe for my free newsletter and you can also join me on Patreon. There you will get more videos from me and you will be able to support my work. As always, questions, comments, conversations down below. Have a wonderful week and I will be back soon with a new video. Bye bye.